Hey guys, Bicep Pair bringing you another Death Knight Dragonflight video. This video is really quite Death Knight heavy. As you can see, we got five Death Knights here aiming to complete a plus 20 knockered offensive. I thought, given the amount of survivability Death Knights have, surely it should be possible to do it without a healer. Um, make sure to stay tuned until the end of the video to figure out if we make it. Nah, just kidding. We, we complete this quite easily, <laughs> to be honest. Didn't choose the best week, gonna be honest. The uh, affixes here of explosives and uh, bursting are quite healer specific. Like, they are generally can be considered as, like, you know, healer affixes. You know, they killed explosions, they heal you up after you kill everything, so on. Uh, luckily for us, right, uh, we can also kill explosives, even though it's not, you know, the most fun. And we can pop AMS to avoid dying from uh, bursting. Um, Dag just uh, missed doing that, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, we are doing uh, three on all the DKs, uh, one frost DK, that's uh, V playing here, and then a blood DK. And um, if you want the frost DK pov, there's a link in the description for a video he made about it, so you can see that as well. For the build, right, I'm doing kind of the normal disease build. Uh, I'm not sure if you saw my recent video talking about the no army one. That is not what we're running here. It's just going to be the classical kind of, you know, uh, picking up army, that kind of thing. Right. We do the normal kind of thing that I do with, uh, like, I have my Grief Torch and Posse Box. Ideally, wouldn't want to run Grief Torch. Maybe Hunger, Icon, Whetstone, good trinkets. I try and balance my stats. Obviously, you can see above me, I have uh, an absolute ton of haste. Uh, if I had the option, I would run less haste. Maybe you know, roughly equal haste mastery and versatility or something. Um, but, you know, I don't have all the gear in the world, so I can't really decide that on a whim. Now, uh, as we're not running without a healer, we have to actually pay this a little bit differently. Um, as I said, we need to deal with explosives. This means using uh, Outbreak as well as uh, Skirt Strike. These are kind of nice abilities to use for it anyway. Outbreak, we make sure we have a lot of relevant plague up times. We don't need to care about that as much. And Scourge Strike, if we're in our Death and Decay already, that will still cleave, even though we're hitting an explosive. You need to have primary target explosive up. And it helps us with the plague wing up time and so on. So it's not a huge loss. Um, however, it's always a bit tricky when the big balls, you have to focus on a lot of things. So I uh, made quite a big of effort of making sure that actually I was hitting a lot of explosives. You can see right there, good example, death and K down, I hit my scourge strike, right? Now, so how do we survive here? Well, <laughs> the answer is quite simple. We use uh, death strike. If you don't get hit by anything, right, especially not good, there's not that much like slow ticking damage that can be an issue. Like if you take a big hit, death strike is great because you can do a double death strike, immediately heal it up. It's when you take like, you know, 5% of your health every second for a long period, that's when you get issues. Fortune Frost, that doesn't happen very often in this dungeon. The one place is the um, Storm Boss, but we will leave his AMS there to deal with it, so that won't be an issue either. Currently, we're just um, dealing all the packs here. I am making sure to leverage my cool lands as they come up. You can see my use my second army there. 350 into the dungeon, which is a good point, I think. We've used army lost already, so using that army on the boss won't bring that much value. There is um, cases where you do want to hold on to it, but in this scenario, I feel like it's definitely worth to just send it. You can see on the early die there, I had some issues where I got a um, bleed on me. Uh, tricky to deal with, just had to death strike a little bit. I need to show, I'm, I'm, I can't promise, but um, if I have the details still, but we're gonna have a look at the, hopefully gonna have a look at the healing afterwards. It's gonna be primarily death strike. I'm using like permafrost as well in the build uh, to help a little bit, but um, overall it's all death strike, you know? All right, we've finished dealing with all these uh, uh, th trash before the first boss. And they're ready to engage here. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a healer to help us actually um, fire the ballista. So I think the tank is going to have to take up that mantle. 
this uh, saboteur is going to have an issue running away because, you know, <laughs> among us, we have uh, 10 death groups. I can see, you know, people not very happy about where it's positioned and you can just grip it to it. But if you let that get to the ballista with uh, 10 uh, D, you know, 5 DKs with 10 grips, I would be very unhappy about our performance, you know. <laughs> Also for reference, um, we're all relatively high in IO. I'm at like 2.9k. Uh, Dag is at 2.95. Fensa is now at almost 3.1k, I think. And V, I'm not too sure. So yeah, we all have pretty much high IO, which means that at 20 is uh, not one of the higher keys we usually run. And I'm sure that helped in this scenario, so we could actually uh, have damage required to beat us. I think the like the main difficulty was the fact that we would die quite a lot. Obviously, without a healer, that tends to happen. So it was all about, you know, does the increased damage from having an extra DPS make up for the loss in time from dying, um, you know, losing that damage outright, as well as getting the extra uh, time addition? Uh, the answer is that it still works, so no problem. All right. Boss is going down somewhat slowly. I'm helping out with explosive there. Using my Grieve Torch. Got my next cooldown window up coming up there with Blight DT Apocalypse. Gonna send that. We are now uh, essentially ignoring the ad, I think. We can just keep gripping it, you know. So, uh, not much of an issue. And we can just take the boss down. Great. I felt like one thing we noticed, obviously when we play with explosives, uh, if we kill everything at the same time, we can AMS it. Uh, but if we don't AMS, we're in a pickle. So leaving one target to kind of death strike up based on the bursting damage was a good idea. Uh, I can imagine these kind of tips are not very useful because uh, they are mostly relevant when you want to run no healers, which doesn't happen very often, you know. <laughs> but still, I think it's interesting to share like, you know, our the challenge was challenges we had and so on. This wasn't the only dungeon we timed, by the way. So we did um, a 21 and a 20 quarter stars as well, timed both of them. And those ones were messy, let me tell you, but we're almost uh, two chested, so that can happen. Quarter stars though is a very quick dungeon, so you generally don't have much difficulties. This pack can be tricky. Obviously the storm balls deal a dark damage, so if you get targeted multiple, time, multiple times, uh, you can die. The thing as well, like, it's kind of fine as unholy as like a DK, because if you take a lot of damage, it's just death strike, and voila, you're back up again. So, as I said, what can kill you is when you have like damage coming over a long duration, right? Also, sometimes you take a lot of damage, you don't have runic power to get you back up, that can also kill you. And I think I do die like two or three times in the dungeon, we'll see. Right, this pack is generally quite uh, dangerous, but I didn't think it's going to pose any difficulty to us here, if I remember correctly. I'm going to make sure I hit the totem here. Just do my normal rotation, you know, naked scourge strike and use all cooldowns, you know, using my epidemic here. Popping down definite K to get some nice cleave, which will generate a ton of ruling power for me to spend again. You can see, yeah, uh, I don't think the uh, Frosty K will win. But he's definitely going to be up there. You can see he's currently at 92k. People don't wonder if Frost DK viable. Yes, it is. Um, in some keys, it's better than Unholy. I played a um, Temple um, 22, I think, with Fencer. He beat me, you know. So, um can definitely happen. He's also a good player, so he might just uh, play better than me. But we don't want to admit that, do we? <laughs> All right, same thing as always. We are using our cooldowns. We got that second window. I'm using Death Strike here. Ah, I died. I think uh, what happens was that my Death Strike, I didn't have a target. It was too far away, so I couldn't actually heal up back up, unfortunately. Anyway, it happens. Just got to get back into it. Here's another issue. Like when we went from one pack to another, uh, if you were low to start with, right, you would have difficulty healing up because you kind of have to take a lot, lot of damage to heal back up to full and that's difficult when you um, start out low because taking any damage will kill you um, oh. Oh. 
didn't move quite far away there from the with the chain lightning, but that's fine. We are kind of worried at this stage about the next boss because it's gonna, it's a difficult one. It has a very high healing requirement when you usually play this, so playing it without a healer obviously is a bit of an issue. But it turns out that is not the problem for DKs, as you will see. We did we did struggle, right? We nearly died. I'm gonna be honest, but. Uh, I think I could have personally played better with how I kind of managed my cool on the healing. So we'll we'll take a look at that when you when you get there. We're just gonna finish off this pack, kill one more, and then we'll move on to the boss. Now I don't want to use my posse box, so I use my unholy salt and cancel my posse box there in the macro. Because I want to have army, puzzle and everything for the boss when we get there. Also I think I I tried this once before, right? In the uh Rebelized pools and we didn't make it. Primarily because the um, second boss is it? Yeah, second boss is a um, really difficult tank one. So it needs to be a dungeon where the tank doesn't take too much damage. Final boss here is a bit difficult. There's a um, debuff being placed on a tank that should be dispelled by a healer, but a DK can immune that, and you can do some fancy tech where you can actually. Um, Taunt as a DPS DK, use AMS, immune the debuff, and then the tank can taunt back again. So we can get around that, even though it is a difficult tank boss, you know, we don't actually need to deal with that mechanic. Alright, Storm boss. Gonna make sure I eat up here so that we're all full on HP when we start. Um, the general idea here is that we are going to use our defensives for the storm phase you know he does these like big circles around you no problem for dk's it's like a, just a one big hit which means that we can death strike them up immediately afterwards go in make a skirt strike using all our cool lance here there we go puzzle we got oh even potion right we're blasting it all right so we got that late strike we're going to try and pick up some uh, buffs before it you can see that I dropped to half HP and then boop, death strike, and we are back to 75% now. You know, easy. All right, I'm 140k here. Not sure why I did so much more than my peers, but oh well. We've got the Electric Storm here, right? So the plan is to use AMS. Uh, I think I used a bit earlier there, right? And then at the later end, we're going to use uh, death strike to uh, keep ourselves healthy. I should have probably, um, like I spent a couple of DCD at starts on using Death Strike. Could have definitely spent those uh, healing myself up. Great there with a big hit. Means that we can now uh, use a big chunky, chunky Death Strike to get us back up. Did have to commit to Potion. Well, I've already done that actually. Um, as you do when you don't have a healer. <laughs> anyway, the next one we're going to have to use some more defensives, which means... Uh, Using um, probably Lichborn. I did that already, I know. We're going to use uh, IBF, right? We didn't use that before, so that's going to be very useful. I'm just trying to get myself back up a little bit. And HBS, a couple of death strikes, so I'm full, full again. Ready for the next uh, AoE. So I used AMS there, which was quite a surprise. I should have, in hindsight, definitely saved it because it's going to make my. The, um, the electric storm much easier to deal with. However, you know, IBF there, we're just going to death strike her, keep ourselves healthy. Boss is dead. There we go. We were close to wiping, right? You know, we were like a 10% HP at some point, but we could have probably definitely played that better. Hmm. Now, oops, I can't navigate apparently. This next uh, portion of the boss, of the dungeon is quite interesting. You know they have these mystic um, uh, ads you can pick up that gives you a haste buff. We have two DKs, so we can have two mystics, which means that we get better. I think it's better overall kind of buff up time. Unfortunately, they are prone to ninja pulling, so I think we're going to wipe ones actually because a uh, mystic uh, ninja pulls. I know we're just going to go into this pack, normal kind of opener. Make a skirt strike and see these, you know, pop it all and then just gonna epidemic spam. Definitely K to refresh our playbringer. That's a general vibe. 
and now we can see we are why don't I have AMS there anyway we have this uh, final guy to deal with help us uh, heal up <laughs> we managed to refresh it though that one's not the best thing we could have done so I'm gonna have to eat also I think V didn't bring any food here which was a bit of a mistake but that you know it happens all right so I think this is where we wipe uh, yeah there we go Oops, this is a bit too much even for, for us, you know, and I think it was a mistake to pull there. Anyway, we're gonna have to skip forward there, bugged out with that little guy as well. All right, back at it. <laughs> you can see it is messy and that, you know, it's partly because um, we don't have a healer, but I also think like these, the, the reasons we wipe are usually not because we're lacking a healer, it's because we just mess up, you know. Oh, that can happen. Quick outbreak there to kill the uh, explosive. AMS there to make sure we don't uh, get any stacks. There we go. Now we're off. You can see when when we have these little uh, windy swirls around us, that means we have the haste buff. It feels great to play with. It's a shame on Holy can't pick it up. We lose our main goal and that is definitely not worth doing. So you just have to get a blood DK or a frost DK that can do it for you. Alright, we're gonna pull a pack into this, I think. Yep, here we go, we've got the birds. Interesting to see like when the other DKs have their army. I think I'm one of the most aggressive army users. I'll I'll definitely get the most armies out in a dungeon, I'd say. Because I can I just use it all the time as soon as it comes up, so I would never save it. Except for when we save it for the storm boss, right? But generally, you know, I never save it. All right, would have been nice there to use AMS biceps. Oh well, gonna have to eat up. Things takes ages to eat, right? You don't heal for anything. Oh well, I'm just gonna have to death strike a little bit at some point to get ourselves back up. All right, we've got cool nuts there. Gonna use our puzzle box that was ready. Apply DT. It's fine if they don't come like instantly in the pool. You know, you can use them after a while. This pool was a bit messy though. Like I could have used my cooldown a little bit earlier, I think. Oh, well, we have uh, Vensa, Vensa and Dag just bursting here, so we're gonna be good. Can you use AMS here, I think. There we go. Easy. <laughs> Unlucky for V, he didn't run the um, AMS reduction thing. So you can see all the unholy is kind of just using AMS all the time, but he's um, stuck on having it on cooldown. Hmm. All right, I think we got this pack and another one, and then we're gonna move on to the next boss. Again, this wasn't like the perfect opener because I didn't have everything ready, but that's fine. Just you know, do some festering strikes, start using epidemics, and then when your cooldowns come up, you just use them. Doing quite well. I'm currently in the lead DPS wise. Unfortunately, I managed to die before the first bo last boss, I think. So, yeah. Uh, I don't think I win overall. It's going to be close, though. Alright, that's dead. We've got this second boss. I realised I learned a lot of new things when I did these, actually. <laughs> things that I should have known already. For instance, uh, next boss, the arrows. You know, when you stack with them, excellent opportunity to use AMS. I used to personally press AMS to dodge like the, uh, so I could stand on DPS when he did his fear. It is so much better to use it on the arrows though, because that's like a real risk of dying. Just use AMS for that. You will never die with it. Much easier for the healer as well. So um, that's my recommendation. Also, another mistake I made, you know, in Academy on the bird boss, the bloody shriek, you can AMS it, and you don't get the debuff. Like, I, I'm i not sure what I've been thinking. You know, I was like, ah, that's physical damage, can't do anything. But I never tried it. Shame. <laughs> anyway, we learn something new every day. So always try and figure out what you can do better. Because um, even if you might not realise it, there's almost always something you can do better. It's like yesterday. 
found out that there's a build better than this one. I was like, oh, hang on. Someone even, you know, <laughs> the bad thing is, someone sent me a message going like, oh, look at this build. Looks interesting. I was like, nah, I don't like this. <laughs> and then I try, I, I play a dungeon against another guy. He was like, you know, 3.1k Ryo, right? And he runs it and he beats me. I was like, okay, sure, I will try it. <laughs> Far too stubborn sometimes, honestly. Anyway, hopefully um, I've spread the word for it properly now. So uh, I think lots of people are going to try it out. It's a fun one. The no army build. If you guys haven't seen it, go watch my other video. You can see it. It is fun. So here, here I do something interesting, right? Uh, I save my poster box, actually. So instead of um, using it with my uh, unholy salt, what I plan to do, right, is when we get to the boss... I'm gonna hopefully army and use my an old assault, right? And use the puzzle box to get big burst there. So that was the reasoning for that. Just to save it for the army. But army is like 150 away, so we'll see. If we get it for the boss. Do we need to clear anything more? Yeah, because we need to clear. Never mind, we're gonna do the boss now. Terrible for me. <laughs> army is almost back. You know. Assault in the 35. Oh, never mind. We have this issue. Um, I had to re-control um, the Mystic, right? And if, you, if you've done this before, if you control a mob and then you dismiss it, it gets incredibly angry at you. Uh, you always get aggro and it can just smack you in the face and you're like, ha, okay, very well. <laughs> so that's what happened to V in that scenario. All right, this boss is not that difficult. It does these uh, casts on you that deal quite a lot of damage, like just random casts on players, the quick shot, but I can just be AMS'd, so no problem. Uh, I'm going to use my posse box and everything here. You'll see that I use uh, Epidemic, which is like on two target, it is uh, better than using a single uh, death call. Also, it stacks up death rod, so it's good. But like um, the no army build, it that runs improved death call, so you get much better. Kind of uh, cleave. You can see that <laughs> stack up, pop AMS, literally no damage taken. So much better than using it on the bloody fair biceps. You can see that I take some quick shots to the face, but you know, a couple of death strikes, and we're all good. Yeah, I hope we don't. I hope we don't get nerfed because of this. I would be very mad if I made a video and they're like. Too much survivability, Death Knights. Can't have that. <laughs> but I think it's fine, you know. Um, we kind of need to be tanky, in a sense, to make up for other uh, places we're not as good. Let's say that to justify it, shall we? <laughs> to be honest, I'm not the only one. Do you guys remember Rex Troy? He did a video when he soloed an M0 as a unholy DK. So I'm not the, the first to kind of explore this area. We've got the arrows again, AMS, you know, AMZ there, I'll say. Boop, boop. And look at that, you know, very healthy. No problem. This boss is going to go down without any issue at all. And then we're going to move on to the uh, final boss. Final boss is actually going to cause some difficulties for us. Um, I think I stand in something. <laughs> Man, I, I hate the last boss with the, the, the storms. It's very difficult to see them when you pop like Abom Abomination Limb and things. But we'll get to that when we get there. Now, we're going to kill both the mystics we have that have been controlled and get enough uh, percentage so that we just need to kill those two um, mobs before the final, uh, final, final boss there. All right. Can you just all our cooldowns here? No reason to hold on to them. Those two uh, mobs before the final boss take ages to kill as well. Especially because Unholy is kind of lacking in two target leave. Unless you run the no army build. That's pretty good for that. Um, let's see, I nearly die here. But it's alright. And we're off to the final boss. Alright, let's just jump through. Right. Um, information for you guys: these have relatively big hitboxes when they charge, 
so um, be careful. <laughs> As you can see, yeah, you know, I was I was inside his hitbox essentially, which was why I died there. Let's just skip it ahead when we're gonna make our way there. All right, back again, magic. Um, you can see I used up I mentioned limit starter. I knew I was gonna have it up. I think one thing we were talking here. Are we gonna use how we're we gonna use our armies? We're like, okay, just send army and pull and uh, kill the boss quickly. Uh, the bad part was that that meant no one had cool lands up for the ads showing up. <laughs> so we we essentially bursted him far too uh, heavily. So in hindsight, uh, we should have not used our armies and pull, and said just made sure to um, uh, have them ready for later. All right, he did some angry hits to me there. We're at 130, unfortunately not two chests, but you know, what can you do? All right, so as I said, shouldn't have used army air. But we are gonna save a bombage and limb because we want to use that for when the, the casters uh, become active. All right, they become active at 60% by the way, so you know exactly when that is. Uh, nothing too fancy here. You want to make sure you have a defensive if you do use Iron Spear on you. Um, that is physical in phase one, so you can't do that much to mitigate it. All right, got some casters. Gonna stand in the middle, use Abomination Limb. Grip out the outer ones. I know he's gonna try and kill them there. Could have probably used better, better coordination. I could also, oh, there we are, you use AMS. The Storm Balls, they do a lot of damage. We have one Death there. Another one on me. I could have used Death Strike there. Just becomes very hectic at the end of this part of the fight, unfortunately. But we survive it. We have three wrestlers available. So just going to make sure we uh, use those and we're going to kill the boss. No problem at all. And look at that. We've got three Grief Torch ready because I managed to die myself. I think it's quite nice that Grief Torch resets on your own death. Gives you kind of like a consolation prize in a sense. Alright, we've got the spare. You want to use AMS for this one. It's magic damage. You just run away, make sure you dodge that. Deal with explosive. Back on the boss. So it's this conductive strike, you see that? That's the tank buster. So you can use AMS to immune it, but not everyone. So um, he used the AMS in that one. But they're going to be one uh, soon again. But you know, you can kind of, uh, there you go. That half of HP. But I think with proper cooldown management, you can deal with it. And I think uh, Fenzo is going to pick it up one of them himself. Maybe the next one. All right, spare. We run out. Make sure we don't get hit by it. And uh, there we go. Conduct a strike. Oh, got another grief torch reset. We are now saving uh, uh, our rest in case we need it, but we won't, I think. Anyway, I thought this was a ton of fun to do. Thank you, your everyone who participated. So, Arena, who's my guild tank, and then we have Dag, Fencer, and V, who's just fellow, um, you know, DK. So, I like to chat with. Leave a comment down below what you think about this video. Do you think it was a fun idea to do? Or, um, you know, was it too easy? Should we go higher? You know, <laughs> upvote, downvote, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.